Good evening, my name is Shauna Anderson and I'm here once more with a discussion board video for American Christian Heritage at Liberty University. This week, our focus is on the fundamentalist versus modernist controversy of the 1920s. I chose to focus on the famous sermon, Shall the Fundamentalist Win, for my post. I hope you enjoy it. On May 21st, 1922, liberal minister Harry Emerson Fosdick preached a sermon that brought the fundamentalist controversy to the forefront of American thought. Entitled, Shall the Fundamentalists Win?, Fosdick's sermon chastised the fundamentalists in both the Baptist and the Presbyterian churches. He compared these closed-minded church leaders to the Jewish leaders in chapter 5 of Acts, who proposed to slay the apostles for their preaching on Jesus as the Messiah. Fosdick put, pointed to the revelation of a contemporary God through Jesus Christ in the New Testament and asserted that the fundamentalist program was both illiberal and intolerant. The preacher also pointed out that many ministers in the Midwest were lamenting that educated people were looking for religion outside of the church and sought to remind his fellow Baptists and Presbyterians of the importance of tolerance, quoting the Apostle Paul, who said, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. During the course of his preaching, Dr. Fosdick mentions a few of these matters in which the fundamentalists and liberals disagree, which he considered inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. One is the virgin birth of Christ. In his sermon, Dr. Fosdick suggested that rather than a historical fact, the virgin birth of Christ could be paralleled with the supernatural births of other founders of religions. He referenced particularly the tendency of the ancient world to attribute divine influence to virgin birth as with Pythagoras, Plato, and even Augustus Caesar. Mr. Fosdick finished his sermon chastising the church leaders in America. He insists that the church should feel a sense of penitent shame for quarreling over what he believes are little matters. While in Asia Minor, Armenian Christians were being murdered in their churches. Attempting to put the quarreling into perspective, Dr. Fosdick asked, what can you do with folks like this? who, in the face of colossal issues, play with the tiddlywinks and peccadillos of religion. In short order, Mr. Fosdick's sermon was picked up by newspapers nationally. In August of 1922, the Topeka State Journal printed a brief article on the sermon saying that the preacher suggests forces at work for the destruction of civilization, and the only safety for the world is dependence on the Christian church, but a tolerant Christian church, one which can focus on larger issues and not get caught up on the smaller differences between liberals and fundamentalists. Likewise, the New York Herald named Fosdick's sermon responsible for the overture. Notably, the Herald mentions Fosdick's doubt of the virgin birth of Christ as historical fact, as a particular issue with Presbyterian leaders. The sermon, reflecting the spiritual challenges faced by many people in the age of scientific discovery, may not have initiated the split between fundamentalists and liberals in the Baptist and Presbyterian churches, but it certainly made liberal ideas of Christianity known nationwide. I hope you enjoyed this brief presentation on George or Harry Emerson Fosdick's sermon, Shall the Fundamentalists Win? And um, you know what? We're going to leave it there.